This movie will tell the story of a man named Richard Jewell, who has just started working as a supply clerk at a U.S. law firm. There, he meets an attorney named Watson Bryant, who asks him to fulfill the need for various supplies. But it turns out that before everyone arrived at the office, Richard had already prepared everything, including Watson's favorite snacks in his desk drawer. Seeing this, Watson is impressed with Richard's work. One day during a break, Richard, who is playing a shooting game, meets Watson. Richard tells Watson that he aspires to become a law enforcement officer to protect the people around him. Eventually, Richard meets Watson at work to say goodbye, because it is his last day. He has found a new job as a security officer at a university. To repay Watson's kindness, Richard gives him his favorite snacks. Watson reciprocates by giving Richard a $100 bill, saying that if Richard succeeds in becoming a police officer or anything else, he must not become arrogant. Hearing this, Richard deeply ingrains it in his mind while carrying out his new duties, maintaining the university's security with honesty and discipline. However, the university thinks he is overdoing it, making the students uncomfortable, even though Richard is just doing his job. In the end, he is fired. Fortunately, a few days later, Richard is hired as a security officer to guard an Olympic opening concert held in a park. There, a man named Tom Shaw works as an FBI agent to oversee the celebration, along with a journalist named Kathy Scruggs, aiming to gather news and information from Tom to create the fastest news possible. Unfortunately, on the second day of work, Richard feels unwell. His friend tells him to rest, but Richard insists he must finish his job, as his mother, Bobby Jewell, always said. Richard monitors the situation until 911 receives a call from a mysterious man claiming to have planted a bomb at the Olympic event. Richard, who had already chased away some unruly teenagers, accidentally finds a suspicious bag and immediately reports it to the other security officers. Instead of contacting the authorities, they assume it's just a regular bag. Richard insists they must follow the existing protocol. Eventually, they contact the authorities. Shortly after, the bomb squad arrives and inspects the situation, confirming that the bag indeed contains a bomb. A few hours after the bomb explodes, a journalist suddenly approaches Richard for an interview on a TV news channel, claiming Richard is a hero who saved the lives of many people. They also offer to write a biography for Richard, which he happily accepts because in the end, everyone appreciates his work. Meanwhile, at the FBI office, Tom is reprimanded by his superior for allowing the criminal to act, even though there were FBI agents guarding the concert. They must find the criminal as soon as possible, and a security officer Richard is appointed. Tom and his colleague then go to Richard's former workplace. In that place, the man explained Richard's mistakes at work, to the point that he was fired for it. Yet we know that Richard was only doing his job. However, the FBI gathered all the evidence of the allegations, eventually suspecting that Richard was the main perpetrator because there was a possibility he did it to be considered a hero and easily achieve his dream of working in law enforcement, like a police officer or similar roles. Kathy learned of the suspicion against Richard from Tom after flirting with him in a bar, leading the media to quickly report the story. Naturally, the FBI was angry because their information had leaked and they had to bring in Richard to get information about the previous day's events. At the FBI office, Richard was puzzled by the interrogation, as it seemed he was already accused of being the main criminal, especially after being asked to sign a paper, which Richard refused to do, asking for time to contact his lawyer, Watson Bryant, whom Richard had previously contacted to help him manage a collaboration agreement requested by the media to create a biography and the like. After learning that Richard was being interrogated without clear evidence, Watson asked Richard to leave immediately and firmly told Tom Shaw that his client would not provide any more information without a lawyer present. And when night fell, Watson came to Richard's house to talk, asking if he really was the criminal as the media outside claimed, and asked Richard to answer without any lies. Richard immediately explained the incident, and in the end, feeling that Richard was a hero, Watson decided to help his friend. The next day, Watson, known as Richard's lawyer, was interviewed by a television news station, where he explained that the FBI and the media had accused Richard, even though there was no evidence pointing to Richard as the perpetrator of the crime. Not only that, but Watson and his assistant Nadia 
tried to measure how far the location of the bag was found from the public phone used by the perpetrator to call the police. And they both realized that Richard was not the perpetrator because the distance was very far and did not match the information from the witnesses' reports of the incident. According to Watson, Richard could not possibly have run back and forth from the scene of the incident in such a short time. The next day when the search was about to begin, Watson was shocked to find a collection of weapons belonging to Richard stored in his home, which only made his friend more suspected as the main perpetrator. But then Bobby Jewell explained that her son only used those weapons to hunt a deer with his friend. Bobby also explained that Richard was very skilled with weapons because it was his hobby from a long time ago, and Richard often scored perfectly on shooting tests. Unfortunately, a short time later, the FBI came to the place and immediately began their task of inspecting all the items used by Richard's family. However, during the inspection, Bobby did not accept the behavior of the officers there, seizing items unrelated to the case. Inside Richard's house, while having a conversation with Tom, Tom then asks Richard to repeat a sentence exactly as the mysterious man had said when calling the 911 operator. Watson, witnessing this, then takes Richard away because such actions by Tom towards his client are not permissible. The entire search operation has put Richard's family under immense pressure, especially with the news outside continually accusing Richard of being the main perpetrator of the crime. Moreover, the FBI has now installed wiretapping devices in Richard's home. The situation becomes more emotional than usual because they cannot carry out their daily activities as before in their own home. Richard tells his mother in a raised voice that they must remain calm and not think about unnecessary things, like the confiscated items, which of course saddens Bobby. In short, Richard and Watson visit a lie detector test facility, where Richard proves to everyone that he is not guilty, as he passes the test without any deception while answering the questions. They also visit the workplace of Kathy Scruggs to request that all defamatory news against Richard be retracted and tell Kathy that she should be ashamed of creating false news without any evidence to prove Richard's guilt. Watson also shames Kathy in front of others because, in his opinion, Kathy is such a poor journalist for disrupting someone's life for her own praise from her friends over the sensational news. Hearing the truth, Kathy tries to prove for herself whether Richard is the perpetrator, and after trying it out at the crime scene, she realizes that Richard cannot be the main perpetrator because it is impossible for him to run back and forth so quickly. Then Kathy tries to meet Tom again, but the FBI is already aware of this. However, instead of stopping the interrogation, Tom suspects that Richard must have been assisted by someone in committing his crime. After that, Watson and Richard's family hold a press conference in front of the media, where Watson expresses disappointment because the FBI and the media have accused Richard without any evidence at all. Watson allows Bobby to speak, where she says she is deeply saddened by the FBI and the media outside, who continue to accuse her son and monitor them without any privacy, 24 hours a day. Bobby pours out her heart while crying and asks the president to help resolve the defamation case that has frightened her family. Finally, the decisive day of Richard's case arrives, where Watson calms Richard so he can answer all questions calmly because they have fought until now to prove to everyone that Richard is a hero. When they enter the room, Tom immediately interrogates Richard again. Here, Richard calmly answered all the questions, until at one point Richard emotionally stated that if he were guilty, the FBI should have found the evidence. Richard also said that if one day a security guard finds a suspicious bag, don't be surprised if they hesitate to report it, because they don't want to be made a scapegoat, since the FBI can't find the real perpetrator. Richard also explained that the FBI should spend all their time and effort looking for the main culprit instead of surveilling Richard, who is innocent. Then he quickly left the place. Three months after the investigation began, Agent Tom returned to meet Richard and Watson Bryant with a paper stating that the charges against Richard were not proven, freeing him from all punishment. This moved him to tears as he thanked Watson for his help throughout this ordeal. Three years have passed since the incident and now Richard is working in law enforcement. Then Watson came to visit, informing him that the real perpetrator of the previous crime at the Olympic event had been found, finally clearing Richard's name from defamation, and thus the movie ends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe.
because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video.